Thank you, Prahirlak. I welcome the opportunity to speak on the subject of respite care today, and I thank the independent group for providing that opportunity. The importance of respite care should not be underestimated, and in fairness, I think its importance is recognised by politicians from all sides. However, despite the best will or the good intentions of the politicians in charge, we must accept that there are huge problems within the system as it currently is. The problems are noted in the motion. An, a non-acceptable number of people on waiting lists for essential respite services, increased workload on carers with less support and respite during the COVID-19 pandemic, and a non, on an ongoing basis, this impacts on the well-being of carers and persons requiring care. The significant human cost for those affected by the closure of respite services as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and the ongoing acute levels of unmet needs. Family carers are hugely important people whose contribution has been undervalued for far too long. A recent visit with a family carer in Wexford, where I was told that she had been quoted 550,000 for residential care for one year, and so let, let us not underestimate the value of the family carer. People caring for loved ones in need of constant care and support is a tough and draining devotion from both the physical and mental point of view. The constant commitment of this work under the most strenuous of situations is both admirable and in some cases heartbreaking. Carers live their lives vicariously through their more in need loved ones. And we all know those in receipt of care can have a variety of different needs and may require, different care, uh, require care of different intensity. A press release from the Department of Social Protection published in early June would indicate that there are 121,000 family carers in Ireland. There are likely to be many more who perform the functions of a family carer without being officially recognised as such. I also note that the Department of Social Protection announced some positive steps recently. Capital disregard for carers increases from 20,000 to 50,000. Weekly income disregard for carers allowance increases from 350 for a single person to, two, to 750 for a couple. 121,000 carers and their families receive 1,850 euros annual carer support grant. And these are all welcome supports, but we must always ask ourselves, is there anything more that can be done? And that particular statement from the Minister refers to the tough position carers are placed in during the COVID-19 restrictions when respite care was suspended for so many people who relied on it so much. And I sincerely hope that that approach is never repeated. As with so many things when it came to COVID, the decisions made at the time have consequences. So many service users regressed during COVID, so much so that they will no longer leave their homes. And not only does respite care benefit the carers, but it also provides variety and professional care to the person in need of that care. The removal of that support will have created stressful situations for all involved. This motion, as we can see, calls on the government to, a number, to do a number of different things. And I want to make comment on some of them. To immediately reinstate all respite beds closed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, it's a complete scandal that COVID-19 has resulted in respite beds remaining closed, despite all COVID restrictions being removed, Minister. How has this happened? How has this been allowed to happen? What is the government going to do to solve the problem? And when is the problem going to be solved? We need answers to these questions and immediate action to reinstate any beds that remain closed. To undertake a comprehensive audit of respite services, funded in whole or in part by the Health Service Executive, to establish the current provisions of respite beds and the level of unmet need. Minister, this is absolutely critical. Whatever waiting lists exist must be cleared. Why is it that we cannot seem to provide a service without a waiting list of some description? In order for this problem to be solved, it is first necessary to establish the extent of the problem, and it must be done immediately. Respite is so vital 
to the mental well-being of carers, I cannot stress this enough. To provide the funding required to ensure ongoing and sustainable capacity in respite services. Now, I mentioned the other day when talking about special educational needs, the constant battles that people face every year to secure supports for their children. Now, similar appears to exist in the respite sector. Ongoing and sustainable capacity must be ensured. We cannot, Minister, have families operating day to day, not knowing from one week to the next whether their supports are going to be there or not. To ratify the optional protocol to the UNCRPD. Now, according to the Human Rights and Equality Commission, the government decided in 2018 not to implement the optional protocol, which allows disabled people to make individual complaints to the UN. And the government said that they would ratify it in 2020, when it had made its first report to the UN. It's now 2022, and there is still no sign of it being ratified. So maybe, Minister, you could outline what the current status of that plan is, and perhaps provide a time frame for its ratification. Another important issue related to the area of care is the pension situation. The programme for government refers to a pension solution for carers. And I've raised the issue number, a number of times in sessions on promised legislation, and have many other, as have many other deputies. We are now over two years into this government, and the magic money tree has been shaken for so many wasteful causes, yet carers are still without a pension solution. When is it going to be sorted out, Minister? When are we going to even hear an update on it? Because any responses to questions to date have been sorely lacking in detail, or targets, or dates. I see in an RTE report today and yesterday, the number of HSE employees being paid more than a half a million per year has doubled from three to six. This would be justifiable in an organisation which was operating efficiently. It is totally unacceptable for an organisation in the disarray the HSE is. The money used to pay those obscene salaries could be put to better use by getting people respite care and getting them off the waiting list. Carers are the people who are most in need. Thank you, Chair.